Hi guys, I'm Al Satch. Like most dads, sometimes you need to put the cover on your toys and start using something a little bit more practical. So I've got a few jobs, modifications and upgrades to do to the vehicle before we set off. So stick around because I'll show you some cheap and free modifications that you can do to your Audi. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is fitting wheel spacers. I've got 15 mil for the front, 20 mil for the back. What we need to do is get the wheels off, get the car jacked up, remove the wheels, put the spacers on them, put the wheels back on. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the wheel to stick out and be more flush with the arch and give it a, just a little bit more of an aggressive look. Now I've just worked out, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to use this quick jack system because the jacking points on this car, they're just too far apart. I'm gonna to have to revert to a good old fashioned trolley jack. I am not having much luck today. I'm now resorting to the jack which comes with the vehicle because my floor jack, as you see right here, is no longer extending all the way up. It kind of stops halfway up, so I'm not sure if it needs an oil change, uh, but either way, that's not working, so now I've got to use this jack here. Okay, so that's the wheel off. So it's 15 mil spaces on the front, and that simply just pops over the center like that, line it up with the holes, and then we need to put the wheel straight back on. So that's the front's done, now it's time to do the back. So this is what it looks like beforehand, and this is what it looks like afterwards. Obviously everything will need to settle a little bit, but I think looking at that angle right now, you can see it's a lot more aggressive from the rear. Certainly the front is sticking out a little bit as well, which is really good. And obviously we need to get these cleaned up, but that's stage one of this upgrade video complete. This is the best modification I've done to my Audi. It's Apple CarPlay, 100% for free guaranteed. And I'll show you exactly how to get this on your Audi in just a moment. Um, the only drawback with this system is that, you know, it is for free, so it's not all bad, but you do need to run a wire from the bottom of your phone into the USB port of the vehicle. Um, I've got this phone just held on with like a little magnetic holder here, but you do get access to all of your music, your phone, your maps everything you would expect on the Apple CarPlay. Now, how exactly do you get this onto your vehicle? Well, as I say, it's completely free. I've got another YouTube channel called Yo Satch, and in that YouTube channel, I'll pop a link in the description. It will show you step-by-step -step on how to get, how to install, you need to download some software, put it on an SD card, the SD card goes in there, it loads the software from the SD card onto the MMI, and then it gives you the option to do Apple CarPlay. So it's a really, really good option. The best, up, uh, the best upgrade that I think I've done on this car, and guess what, 100% free. So I'll pop the link in the description below this video for that free software. So next up, I've got this black front grill badge. You can see it's just simply held in by some like retainer clips. and then this should just clip straight on. So unfortunately I've hit a big snag here because the clips on the back side of this grill emblem here don't match up with the holes. So this is definitely the wrong badge. Unfortunately, this will not work. I have a few words with the supplier to see how quickly they can get me a new one. Now I've got replacement S-line badges for the side of the car. These should be pretty easy because they're just an adhesive. So this should just peel right off and I'll stick this one on in its place. That one's off. We'll give this a bit of a clean up. I'm gonna try and leave the line on though so I know exactly where the new badge can sit. Right, so I've got most of that off now, but I've left just enough of a line. I haven't cleaned it too much so that I know exactly where this new badge should sit. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So it's actually the next day. I contacted the seller about this front grill badge. He didn't reply, but he did give me a refund straight away. So I guess that's him holding his hands up and saying, yeah, the product isn't suitable. So what I've done is I've modified two of the little clips which don't fit the apertures on the, uh, the front grill of the bumper here. So I've basically removed two of the clips, 
and I'm going to pop this in now to see if it A will clip straight in and B will hold solid. I don't want it sort of laying loose. If you're in this situation and you get one of these badges, uh, you just need to remove the top two corner clips and then it will fit in no problem. I'm quite happy with that. Right, so next up, I'm going to do this badge, replacing with this black badge. Same process as the sides. We need to mask this off, get some wire or string in behind here, and then once I am able to get this off, I'll be able to clean all of the residue off, clean all of the, uh, the glue there, and then finally stick the new badge on. This whole process probably takes about 15, 20 minutes. And then I'll do a bit of a clean up around here because you can still see some marks where the tape has been as well. But overall, I think that looks pretty good. I've had a thought actually, while I'm at it, I'm gonna remove the A6 badge, the TDI, and the Quattro badge as well, just to give it a completely flush look. It seems a bit daft having the badges in black and some of them in silver or chrome. It just doesn't make sense. So if you're wondering about the roof system setup, these are modular roof bars. These are modular case system roof bars. I'll pop the link to these in the description. If you wanna know how to fit these, I've got another YouTube channel. It's called Yo Satch. Um, and I'll put a full DIY guide on that channel. So that's there right now. So you can find out about these roof bars. And also this uh, roof box, this is called a, a Thule Vector roof box. This costs about 1,300 pounds. So it is quite expensive, but it does follow the lines of the car really well. I've had this on a Porsche, Audi, BMW, maybe a few others as well, but it follows the lines of any car really, really well. It looks great. And you can actually fit quite a bit in these despite its sort of low profile look. 